GPT 5.2 is finally here, and OpenAI made this model way better than I expected it to. After weeks of leaks, speculation, and a lot of noise, we finally get to see it live. So let's break down what GPT 5.2 actually is and why it matters. Here's the framing OpenAI is very intentionally using. GPT 5.2 is the most capable model yet for professional knowledge work. That's not a casual phrase. This model wasn't optimized to win simple benchmarks. It was optimized to build spreadsheets, create presentations, write and review code, analyze long documents, and run multi-step projects end-to-end. -end. And OpenAI is backing that up with real usage data. Enterprise users say that they've already saved about 40 to 60 minutes a day, and heavy users are saving about 10 hours per week. GPT 5.2 is designed to push that even further. When it comes to benchmark, the GDP value measures real well-specified knowledge across 44 occupations. So this is not riddles, not trivia, but actual work outputs. And the headline is that GPT 5.2 thinking beats or ties industry professionals on 70.9% of tasks. That makes it OpenAI's first model performing at or above human expert level on real professional work. And it does that over 11 times faster and at less than 1% of the cost. That's the moment this stops being an AI assistant and starts becoming a force multiplier. This is probably the most important behavioral change, which is that GPT 5.2 is optimized for long horizon reasoning and execution. In practice, that means it remembers objectives longer, it doesn't lose contacts halfway through, and is far better at multi-step projects. This is why companies like Notion, Shopify, Zoom, Databricks, and Box are all calling out the same thing. They're seeing state-of-the-art tool calling and long-horizon performance. Translation, you don't have to monitor the model anymore. It plans, it executes, and it finishes it all by itself. On the coding side, GPT 5.2 quietly sets the new high on Software Engineering Bench Pro. But the most important takeaway isn't the number, it's reliability. Early testers say GPT 5.2 debugs production code more reliably, handles large code bases better, and ships fixes with fewer breakdowns. Front-end developers are especially noticing huge gains, including complex UI and even 3D work. One tester even said, the version bump undersells the jump in intelligence. And if we look at it right now, GPT 5.2 thinking at extreme high levels is achieving about 55.6%, which is not heard of before. Let's talk about Arc AGI for a second, because this is one of the most important signals in the entire release. Arc AGI isn't about memorization or trivia, it's designed to test general reasoning, the ability to solve new, unfamiliar problems using logic, patterns, and abstraction. Can the model think when it hasn't seen the problem before? On Arc AGI 1, GPT 5.2 Pro is the first model ever to cross that 90% mark. That alone is impressive. It also achieved that level of reasoning though at nearly 390 times lower cost than earlier models. That's just not smarter, that's scalable intelligence. But Arc AGI 2 is where things get really interesting. This version is actually harder. It strips away shortcuts and it isolates fluid reasoning, the kind humans use when solving brand new problems. GPT 5.2 thinking hits 52.9% and GPT 5.2 Pro goes even higher at 54.2%. That's a new state of the art result. And for context, models weren't even close to this a year ago. What this tells us is simple. GPT 5.2 isn't just better at known tasks, it's better at multi-step reasoning, quantitative accuracy, solving problems it hasn't seen before, and that's the difference between a model that follows instructions and a model that can actually figure things out. This is the kind of progress that doesn't look flashy, but it's exactly what you need if AI is going to be trusted with real high-stake work. Now, let's take a look at the model's capability. So I'm going to ask the model to create a single page app in a single HTML file with the following requirements. Name, ocean wave simulation. Goal is to display realistic animated waves and features, change wind speed, wave height, and lighting, and the UI should be calming and realistic. Let's see what the model creates. So it looks like the model is done coding and we can see that it started coding it instantly and there's a pretty dense amount of code here. So I'm going to take all this code and put it into an HTML file and then we can see what it has created. Okay, this is amazing guys. You can see that I have created the ocean wave simulation using that code from ChatGPT. I have the ability to change the wind speed here. I can increase it and decrease it. We also have the wave height here so I can increase that and everything. So let's increase the wave height. 
We also have the lighting, sun angle and shimmer. So we have all these options here. You can see it's pretty responsive and it also shows me how many frames per second. As well, there's a calm preset, so we can click on that and it'll make the waves much more calm. That's something I didn't ask it to create, so that's something cool that it was able to add that. As well, a storm preset. So we can see that here, if there's a big storm, what it looks like. And we can gently push the surface for realism. So let's push it here and it will change the wave a little. So this is really amazing and it's great to see something like this. So I'm on LM Arena right now and I want to compare the new model GPT 5.2 against Gemini 3 Pro. And I'm going to ask both of these models to create a single page app in a single HTML file with the following requirements. Your name should be Solar System Simulation. Goal display realistic solar system model and the features it should have is that it should be able to change rotation speed, planet weight and background colors and the UI should be galaxy and sci-fi oriented. So let's see what both of these models produce and see which result is better. All right, looks like our generations are done and we can see that GPT 5.2 created this version and Gemini 3 Pro created this version. So if we take a look at the GPT 5.2, one thing I notice is that the movement of these planets seem a little bit more realistic based on how much they move in real life. Obviously, I am no scientist, so somebody watching this video, if you guys agree with the movements, you can let me know. We can also increase the rotation speed here. So this is really amazing. Uh, then we also have planet weight, target planet Earth. So I, oh, I can change specific weights of specific planets. So I can make Earth bigger, smaller. Uh, we can also change it to Neptune, which is, this is kind of sick because I didn't ask the model to do like this much, but it was able to add that. Now the background colors, we can change that. So we have Nebula here. Oh, I can select the multiple ranges of the color. This is amazing. Then we have space. Let's make space. Yeah, this is sick. Then we also have star density. So we can increase the amount of stars that we see or decrease them all the way down. So let's keep it. Then we have zoom here, which we can reset, pan, and change as well here. For some reason, I'm not able to edit the values here, but that's okay. But this is not bad at all. I think this is pretty good and like it's realistic. Like the planets look very much realistic. Now, what does it say here? Orbits use Kepler scaled period sizes and distance are log scale to fit screen. Okay, so it does look like it applied some science to mirror these movements of real planets. And let's take a look at Gemini 3 Pro. Obviously, Gemini 3 Pro from the get-go doesn't look as realistic as the other one. It looks a little bit too much, you know, 2D versus the one that we saw here is a little bit more 3D. We can see the shape of the Earth and everything like that. We also have the ability to change this rotation speed here, but it's not bad. And it looks like these planets don't follow any signs when it comes to the rotation compared to the other one. The planet size, once again, we don't have the ability to select individual planets. We can only manipulate all of them. So GPT wins on that. As well, we only have certain colors that we can choose versus GPT had the ability to choose any level of color you wanted. The zoom level works compared to GPT, so this one wins for that. But in my opinion, I think GPT 5.2 is definitely the winner here. So I'm going to vote for it here. So in LM Arena, I'm going to vote for GPT 5.2 because that's definitely my winner. Just to show you guys more examples of what GPT 5.2 is capable of. So there's a guy named Pierto and he had access to GPT 5.2 for a while. And he one shot coded this, which is a building a 3D graphics engine in a single file, interactive controls, 4K export. And this was done in one shot. So let's take a look at it. So it looks like the model called it the impossible world. And you can see that it has able to generate these 3D interactions you are able to improve the light intensity reflections steps camera distance all of these abilities that we see at the top here gpt 5.2 was able to do that in one shot and this is amazing guys because we're creating 3d worlds now with these new models which was not heard of before if you enjoyed this video this is what we do here fast clear updates on the biggest moves in ai if you want to stay ahead of everything happening in this space make sure you're subscribed and if you want the hands-on side demos tools workflows and everything developers can actually build with check out the world of ai we also run a simple no noise newsletter that gives you the most important ai tools and updates in just a couple of minutes subscribe here follow world of ai join the newsletter and i'll see you in the next one